it's here. It's not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's probably just going to continue to expand and become larger. So how do we fit into that? Originating from deep inside the Rocky Mountains, transported through the power of the internet, and arriving inside your tiny earbuds, it's the Appraiser Coach Podcast, helping appraisers increase their efficiency, quality, and make more money. Here's the guy who makes it his life's mission to create value for real estate appraisers nationwide, your host. And the appraiser coach, Dustin Harris. Welcome, everybody. Dustin Harris hanging out in the podcast chair. Got a great show coming up for you. Lots of changes in the appraisal industry uh, the last little while. And uh, have uh, two individuals on that uh, have... uh, have some cool ideas that I wanted to explore together. I want to first remind you we are sponsored by three great companies. Uh, First of all, OREP Insurance. OREP is my E&O insurance. It's the one I've been using for uh, several years now, and uh, you should be as well. Go to OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P.org for more information. Uh, We're sponsored by Data Master. Data Master, of course, rolling out Data Master 6 across the country. You can learn more by going to DatamasterUSA.com. One more time, it's DatamasterUSA.com. And finally, we're sponsored by Alamode software. Alamode is the software that I've been using for over 20 years. You can find out more by contacting them. Uh, pick up the phone, folks. We, they actually have a phone number and they answer the phones. In, in today's age, can you imagine a company actually answers their phones? It's it's 800 Alamode. You can call them and talk to them, ask any question you have, or you can just pick up your computer like everybody else does and go to alamode.com. It's alamode.com if you want to know more about Alamode software. Folks, uh, have a couple of uh, fun guys on uh, today, uh, Mr. Brian Kirkpatrick um, and Mr. Matt Hyatt, both from Texas. Welcome, boys. Hello, How's it going? Good, good. I'm glad uh, glad you guys were able to make it on, uh, and uh, appreciate you taking the time. I'm I'm going to just uh, kind of just read through uh, briefly a little bit a uh, background on on both of you. Um, Brian has been in the real estate appraisal business. Uh, uh, since 2008, after he graduated college at uh, Texas State University, uh, trained under a small family company from 2009 to 2014, uh, specializing in North Central Texas rural residential properties. He's uh, licensed in Texas uh, in 2015, certified in 2016, as well as FHA. He's owned DFW appraisals in the Dallas-Fort Worth metro area since 2015. Uh, You're an AI member, uh, VA appraiser, member of the AGA and the ATA, and uh, a wife and uh, no kids? No kids. No kids. uh, something that will hopefully change in the near future. Oh, well, good on you. Um, and uh, you like to <laughs> golf, guess, play right? guitar. That's right. You'll find out, man. You'll find out. I got four of them. Right, so right. don't don't ask me on air to, to, to give my opinion. And you do a little street biking as well. Is that, uh, when you say street biking, motor biking or pedal biking? No, cycling. Cycling. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I, I don't, I don't, I don't do that kind of stuff. All right. Matt, uh, Matt has been working in the appraisal industry since 2000. Uh, he spends the first five years at an appraisal firm in New York, assisting approximately 20 appraisers in all aspects of the appraisal process. I hope that will come into the uh, discussions a little bit today, Matt. Uh, he took a brief break while attending the University of Oklahoma, where he met his wife, uh, brought him down to Dallas, Texas, where he began his appraisal apprenticeship. And after working for two different firms and growing to a uh, partner in one, he recently decided to branch out and open up his own office, which is called Hyatt Appraisal Company. Uh, Matt has been in the industry for 18 years, the last 10 as a certified residential appraiser, currently as a candidate for the SRA designation. Congratulations on that uh, with the Appraisal Institute. He's a father of two kids. Maybe we should ask you, uh, Matt, should, uh, should Brian have kids or maybe we're getting too far off in the weeds? <laughs> uh, you know, I think it's like every dad says, it's it's a blast. It's 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 work, but it's it's fun. I wouldn't yeah, change it for Yeah, now. awesome. Uh, recently celebrated his ninth anniversary with his wife, Andrea. Andrea? Andrea. How do you say it? Andrea. 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 Okay. Awesome. Yeah. Matt, welcome to the program. Uh, Brian and Matt, appreciate you guys coming on. Now, I, I guess we should set this up. You're kind of in the same area. Rivals? No, I really? wouldn't say rivals. I would say uh, we, we try to go with the peer thing. You know, We actually met through the 100% appraisal group. Right um, on. Shout out to Mark. 
Yeah, and found yeah, out absolutely. that we had a mutual friend that Brian went to college with, who was somebody who had trained me through a local fitness thing, and okay. it was just kind of small world. And we probably talk. We've only actually met in person one time, but we talk several times a week. Probably spend a few hours on the phone every week. Just okay, well, catch hold it up on. and hold back in ideas. Hold on a second. I've, I've been in this appraisal gig long enough to know that appraisers can't talk to appraisers, especially those that that work in their own areas. Well, yeah, but not when we're not we're not talking about specific assignments. <laughs> we, can, <laughs> we can we can talk about what are, what Matt's kids are doing. His, and by the way, Matt's uh, is it four? Is he four years old? Is it, uh, just turned five. five. Just turned five. He's he's going to be a professional soccer player. Nice, uh, nice. <laughs> Very cool. He's serious. Yeah. It's it's really cool. Uh, but him and I, we really do. We we talk very frequently uh, about our markets, about the industry. Uh, we're, we constantly are pinging uh, ideas off of each other for each other's businesses, uh, you know, because we both run a fairly similar business model. And Dustin, I'm sure that your business model has got some sort of similarities to ours as well, um, because we're dealing with lots of work right now. Yeah. Lots of work in metro areas, uh, maybe a little bit of outlier stuff as well. So having a, a source and he and, and he's not the only one and I'm probably not his only one, but two sources that don't necessarily uh, rub each other's market every day, okay. but definitely uh, share a lot of the same uh, business models and thoughts, I guess would be the easiest way to say Well, that. and you guys, you both know that I run uh, mastermind groups across the country. In fact, one of them is in Dallas. And, and one of the things that I felt like I needed to do in the very beginning is is to put a little bit of a, a stipulation in in place, and that is, uh, you know, if you belong to my mastermind, you're guaranteed, unless verbally you let me know otherwise, you're guaranteed to not have somebody else in that same mastermind who runs in the same circles that that, that basically covers the same area. And the reason I've done that is it seems like generally the attitude that appraisers have is, uh, you know, they want to keep their cards co- close to their vest and they don't want their competition mm-hmm. learning about their business models. And we talk about some, you know, to be fair, we talk about some very, very detailed things in the mastermind. We get into numbers, we get into fees, we get into uh, types of assignments, we get into business model uh, proprietary information that uh, that I think you know should be kept close to the vest. But let's talk about this word collaboration for just a second. We're going to talk big data today, and I think that also applies. But I love this idea that two appraisers that, uh, you know, maybe they overlap a little bit, maybe they touch each other's areas, but they're not afraid to share information and call each other up. Tell me how that's been and and the pros and cons of, of going through that process. Matt, let's start with you. Yeah, you know, it's been, for Brian and I, it's been really, it's been a good thing. Um, just the last couple of days, we had kind of talked about, we have a little bit of a crossover in our coverage areas. It's not very big, but we kind of decided being on some of the same panels and dealing with some of the same people. It would actually probably benefit us both, or just our business structures, if we kind of pull back from the areas that we we do cross over and say, Hey, I'm not going to go to Tarrant County. He's going to take himself off of Dallas and some, some common lenders that we have and kind of pitch it as a way that we're serving our clients. But in the same sense, you know, if we can stay closer, we can be more efficient with our time and resources and obviously then be a more productive appraisal office. So, you know, and then we've done just some basic referrals as well. I've introduced him to some clients of mine. I know I was a VA appraiser and I you know, got him hooked up with some of the guys down in the Houston RLC to help that get started for him. And he's paid it back to me with several clients that I've added this year who have kept me plenty busy. So it's been a really dynamic thing and I've, I've, I'm actually enjoying it a lot. That is super cool. Brian, are you finishing each other's sentences yet? <laughs> Basically, <laughs> but, but uh, what what appraiser can't finish another appraiser's sentence, yeah. right? <laughs> so, it, yeah, it all comes down to damn those AMCs. That's that's the way every sentence ends. <laughs> well, and you know what's funny is the way I look at it now. I've been kind of turning some of my business model in a better direction. I guess would be the right way to phrase it. In the last six to eight months, uh, and Matt's been a pretty strategic partner in that, uh, helping me get on with the VA and a few other clients that I didn't currently have. And Dustin, I have not worked for an AMC in almost six months and I am stacked. So I love it. Love it. 
Good it for goes you. to show you something. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it absolutely does. What you focus on becomes bigger. And a lot of appraisers are, are fearful or don't really know how to, to venture into that, to, that, that space. But that can be a big space. And it doesn't just have to happen, by the way, in metro areas. Um, there's a lot of business out there to be gained, uh, but uh, it, it does take some work and it does take some focus. So uh, are you guys sharing resources as well? Uh, you, you talked about sharing ideas, thoughts, um, clients even. Um, do you share any resources such as technology or human resources, anything of that nature? On a human uh, resources no. level, not, we're not, I don't know that we're there yet. I mean, we've, it's always ideas and different mm-hmm. things that we throw at each other. Um, as far as technology, I think we throw a lot of ideas off each other there and different tools and things that we're using. Like I'm completely paperless. I don't use any paper in my operation. I'm full, you know, mobile, um, so I know Brian was kind of piggy, you know, trying to work off of the going paperless. And yeah. I was throwing some things at him that has worked for me the last several years. So like things like that. I don't know if we're actually to the point where we're crossing over sharing things specifically, but just more of the ideas and ways to operate our businesses. Very cool. Very cool. Yeah, we're just far enough away from each other that trying to combine into either a partnership or something like that would be it, it wouldn't work, I don't think, just for mm-hmm. locational purposes. Sure. But for the most part, we kind of, we don't, I don't guess we do everything just like each other. Uh, but like he was saying, I've been going a hundred percent paperless for about three or four months now. Uh, and when I say that it's, it's work file retention. Uh, mm-hmm. We still obviously have to hit the print button every once in a while. Um, but things like that. And I'm a hundred percent mobile when it comes to using uh, the Alamo technology, which has been a huge factor in being able to work the way that I do uh, in the past I don't, what has it been out for three, four years where, where it's been so integrated the way it is? I don't remember the time frame. Um, but yeah, I mean, we're, we, and we kind of met each other at a point where we were already doing a lot of the same things. Um, we, and we try to maybe mold our businesses based off of ideas or uh, things that one or the other have been doing. So it's it's tweaking, but not necessarily building, if that yeah. makes sense. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I love this. I love the collaborative nature. And frankly, I just love the attitude, the attitude that uh, that we don't have to be running our businesses based on fear and negativism, which which I think we unfortunately see a lot of. Um, and, and, you know, just certain individuals are very vocal. I don't, I don't know that in general, uh, there's, there's a lot of fear and negativism out there in the, uh, appraisal world, but there are, you know, the vocal few. Um, and you know, some of the things that, uh, one of the reasons I wanted to have you guys on is to talk a little bit about some of the changes that are going on in the appraisal industry currently. And I do, you know, fear that there is some of that going on, that the, the, the fear, the negativism, with ideas to data, uh, data share, data uh, retention, data, uh, big data, if you will. And I want to talk a little bit about some of the uh, uh, the positives, if we can, when it comes to that. So I'll let either one of you take this uh, baton and run with it a little bit. Uh, talk to us about where you see things going uh, in the appraisal profession. And do we have fear for our jobs, guys? Well, who would like it first? No, I don't know, Brian. I guess you're talking. Go for it, man. <laughs> uh, I'll, I will go right ahead. Well, well, before I say anything, I'm going to quote a T-shirt I've seen online before, <laughs> and I'm not sure the origin of it. Uh, oh, I'm not I'm sure the manufacturer. I'm hilarious. not sure how it's copyrighted, but <laughs> it states: "Certified real estate appraiser. We do precision guesswork based on." unreliable data provided by those of questionable knowledge. Oh man. Amen. <laughs> <laughs> Hilarious. Can I, do, do we have a, a somewhat of an agreement on that? Oh yeah. That's, that, <laughs> that's pretty much on my website right now. <laughs> so the, in the, in, in, this thing's been around for a while, and I've, I've always told it to people who are not in the industry who ask me, what do I do? And I say, well, I'm a real estate appraiser. And they go, oh, cool. So you come check out my HVAC system mm-hmm. and my route. No, I'm not an inspector. Mm-hmm. I'm an appraiser. A lot of people, the general public, which who are we trying to protect, really don't know what it is that we do, right? Sure. Most of the time. So this is one of the things that I tell them. <laughs> or when somebody asks me, how did you come up with that? you know, valuation, valuation number. And it's like, well, we, this is kind of how we started out and we try to whittle it down and do the research and, and come to a range. But when we started talking about the machine, big data, and that has become more recent, the way I look at it is, is we're, we're, we're not going to be 
around in this business, I don't think, to the exact capacity that we have been used to. Sure. And there's plenty of, of other podcasts, Dustin, that you've had, and I've listened to stuff from Voice of Appraisal and some other places where that's pretty much where everybody is. And I think everybody knows that. Now, whether or not everybody wants to admit it or not is completely different. <laughs> right. And so, yes, the world is ever changing. Uh, I'm 32 years old. Matt is 36, I believe. Yep. Guys like us have got 10 to 15 years, you know, working towards where, you know, where we are at now in this business, but we still have a long time to work. So we really have to be able to be adaptive to changes in an industry, just like there is anywhere else. And when it comes to big data, I think you said it pretty well in one of your other podcasts was it's here. It's not going anywhere. As a matter of fact, it's probably just going to continue to expand and become larger. Right. So how do we fit into that? I think the question right now is for the industry, at least with residential appraisers, is we have no idea where we fit currently, and we really have no idea where we're going to fit in the future. And it is very, very scary to be <laughs> frank, right? Yeah. Absolutely. So, so how do we do it? What do we do? Yeah. Well, and I don't have the answers. <laughs> oh, man. I, man, that's why I had you on the program today, Brian. I thought you had all the answers. Oh, no. Well, then maybe I should just hang up. Now. Oh, geez. Uh, <laughs> well, I'll tell you one thing, and I, and I want to flip this to Matt as well, because, you know, listeners to my program know just a couple of weeks ago, I, I interviewed George Dell, very smart guy, been in the industry a long time. He gets it when it comes to, you know, where we are, where we've been and where we're going. And, and you know, I'll just paraphrase what he said. He said, uh, appraisers used to be uh, the source of data. People would come to us because we had the data. And I can testify to that. I used to run around to all of these little real estate offices in these podunk towns in Idaho and Wyoming and Utah, and I would spend my day trying to get a hold of their sales book and trying to get information about this sale or that sale and digging up stuff at the courthouse. And I'll tell you, that was my data, baby. I mean, I worked hard for that data. I owned that data, if you will. Uh, and people would come to me because I had the sales. I had the details. Uh, and those were in the days of three comps and you're done. You know, uh, Things have changed a little bit since then. In fact, they've changed a whole lot since then. But you know, as, as George pointed out, we're no longer the data masters, if you will. We, we no longer own that data. People come to us because they want that data interpreted. How will that change things in the future, Matt? You know, that's the biggest, I mean, that's the million dollar question, I think. I think as appraisers, we've always kind of been, we always look backwards. You know, every, I think every appraiser, every guy I've worked with and for, we've, you're always looking from today backwards. Um, and I think we lose sight of where we're going sometimes. So I think the biggest thing for me is I want to I'm not a fan of some of the things that are out there right now, but I do understand that if we can incorporate big data with what we know and the principles and the training that we have and what we do, that to me is the perfect solution. And I wish over the last 10, 15 years, us as a industry, uh, as appraisers or organizations that re represent us would have been a little bit more forward thinking on creating our own AVM, creating our own mm. databases, creating things that we could have incorporated with a professional eye on it versus just relying on data by itself. Because that's what scares me. Is we, we all see our MLS. We see the data that's being pumped into everything. I, you know, the machine, you know, we won't mm -hmm. name names, but you know, I, through our MLS, it's powered he, by he, them. I look he on shall it, not be named. We'll I'm just call him the big machine. Every day um, in Realist and, you know, just countless things that just aren't, correct in there and that's what sure. we're big data is relying on so as appraisers you know we have the, we have more credible data we just got to find a way to you know i guess find a way to work it all together and get to a bit where we have our own database where maybe we have something that's better quality may not be the volume that a fannie mae or whoever may have but I think quality is going to take precedent over a, over a quantity eventually. Yeah, the, the the term garbage in, garbage out, I think comes to mind. You know, yeah. if you don't have quality data to begin with, I don't care how, quote unquote, big your data is. If it's wrong, it's wrong. And uh, and so, Brian, tell me, talk to me more about that. Obviously, we're not going to compete with the machine, if you will, uh, big <laughs> data and some of the, the, the bigger companies out there that are kind of the, uh, the conglomerate of that data. But uh, is there something that we as appraisers can do. Uh, in fact, if you don't mind, I just want to parlay, you know, kind of what you were saying before. You and Matt have found this 
mutual beneficial uh, process of, of bouncing ideas off of one another. Um, could we parlay that into what we're talking about now in the sense that maybe we're not going to have the biggest database, but is it possible as it appraisers that we can, again, become the data providers and not just the analysts? I, I think so to, to a certain degree. I don't think that we will ever, like you said, be as large as the machine or the multiple machines or the grandchildren of the machine, you know, that <laughs> right. could potentially spawn. Um, but the way I look at it is, and me and Matt talk about this all the time, and especially with some recent things that have gone on in the industry, is they're already collecting our data. Our MLS system and and our our system that's, that tethers our county tax records to the MLS system are already owned by the machine mm -hmm. or machines, plural. Sure, sure. Um, so they're already getting it. Now, granted, like I was quoting my T-shirt from earlier, is it's entered by people that don't necessarily have the correct data. So the huge data sets that are being created and will continue to get larger are going to be inaccurate. Now, granted, not every appraiser is going to go measure a house and come within the exact same square footage of it or, or gross living area, right? But the percentage of that being more accurate with appraisers is probably going to be more accurate with tax records or somebody who is not verifying the source. Sure, exactly. So I think that at some point, the machine will have <laughs> all of this data. Mm -hmm. And decisions, lending decisions, uh, data research, it's all going to be based on that. But there's still a certain area of appraising, I think, uh, for the residential sector that we as appraisers still can retain. Uh, if you're doing you know, work for lawyers, uh, just anybody that's not a lender. So if you're not you know, if it's not going to Fannie and Freddie or FHA or VA or all these other outlets for lending, it may not be collected. So if you're sending uh, a PDF copy to a homeowner who called you to come do an appraisal on their house, you're sending it to them. And unless the machine owns, you know, Microsoft or somebody else at some point who, where they can collect from your emails, <laughs> that, which I don't know what the legality of that would be, <laughs> then they may, there may be a set of data at some point that we could collect. Uh, on a small scale or yeah. potentially even a large scale. I mean, the sky's the limit, right? There's who says that it has to be two guys in Dallas and Fort Worth doing this. Yeah. It could be a statewide thing. It could be a, nat a, a national thing. Um, and I'm not sitting there saying that it would be 100% effective or that it would work. But I think that there's potential for that. Um, and I also believe that if we really do want to band together and work together in this industry, because let's face it, appraisers, or, or the only person that's on our side in this business really is another appraiser sure. um, to s some degree. So instead of trying to work against each other, trying to work together, we can get obviously a lot more done. And you can see that in the industry if you're a part of some of these Facebook groups and forums and whatnot, where you can see there are people out there that really are trying to make a big difference in our industry uh, for us and not necessarily in the benefit of everybody else opposite of us. Excellent. So yeah. great, great thoughts. Uh, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. Go, go ahead. Finish your thought. I think I did. Okay. <laughs> I don't know if I was going to build upon anything on that or not. Okay. Uh, and Matt, you know, you can build on that or remind me to say something else that I need to. Okay. Well, I'll tell you <laughs> what, guys. I, before. I, I want to I want to chat uh, with you more about this and maybe explore this a little bit more detail and kind of kind of paint the picture as to what this might look like uh, if if somebody wanted to take this baton and run with it. But I first want to pause here, of course, and talk to you about uh, three great companies. Uh, speaking of being able to get more done, in fact, I, I actually mentioned the inadvertently uh, the word data master earlier. Um, but there is a company out there called Data Master, and Data Master, of course, is a sponsor of this program. There's a reason they're sponsor sponsor here. Uh, they are a company that I use, a service that I use and that I love, uh, gives me the ability to work more efficiently, to take the data and not spend so much time uh, inputting it into my report. Instead, I hit a button, I choose the data, I'm still in control of the data, uh, but it directly saves me time by inputting it directly into the report. And then I can spend my time analyzing the data rather than inputting the data. Folks, if you want to know how to save 30 to 60 minutes per report, you want to know more about that, go to datamasterusa.com. Again, it's datamasterusa.com. Alamode. Alamode is the uh, software that I've been using for a long time. Uh, they've been in business for a longer time, and uh, they're still the company that I continue to use uh, to get more done. 
be more efficient. Uh, I am mobile. I'm out there in the field, and uh, they currently have the best mobile process when it comes to appraisals out there and the the ability to be able to work with a company who works with you. Their technical side is is second to none. Um, their ability to be able to help you out with any problems that you might have. Folks, check them out if you've not already. Uh, go to alamode.com or you can pick up the phone and call them at 800 800- all mode. Finally, we are sponsored today by OREP Insurance. OREP is the ENO that I just uh, just barely renewed with. Uh, in fact, uh, just last week I uh, got my renewal and uh, we're a month and a half a- ahead of-, of schedule, which is great. Uh, I know that uh, some of my clients cut me off 30 days before it to expire. So glad to get it done. Glad it was such a, a, a an easy process. And yes, once again, I saved money going with OREP. Folks, you will too. Check them out. Go to OREP.org. That's O-R-E-P dot org for your next e provider. And welcome back to the program, folks. We are talking with uh, Mr. Matt Hyatt and uh, Brian Kirkpatrick, both in the Dallas-Fort Worth area. Got a sister down in Fort Worth, guys. I, I love that area. Get down there every about three months. And uh, uh, I hate big cities, but if I had to live in one, uh, Dallas would be uh, top of the list. I, I love that area. Great people. Uh, appreciate you guys joining us. We're talking about data uh, collection today. We're talking about data dissemination today, dissemination, uh, being able to interpret the data, uh, who provides the data, how good is that data. Uh, there's been some recent moves, obviously, with some very big companies um, in the valuation field. And uh, I know that uh, that brought a lot of fear to mind to, to some appraisers, and rightfully so. I think that there's a fear to be had. I, I'm, I'm famous for saying fear should be a great motivator, but a poor problem solver. I don't think we should use fear to pro- solve our problems. So let's say that there is some fear out there, guys, and uh, you know they start to freak out a little bit and say, you know, things are changing. Uh, things are different than they used to be. I'm a little bit fearful, but I don't want to use fear to to solve my problems, just to motivate me in the right direction. Matt, where do we go from here? I think, piggyback on what I was saying before, I mean, it, it's going to come back down to quality. You know, I mean, we're not going to be able to compete with big data. So if we don't embrace it and make it better, then, you know, the fear the fear can take over at that sure. point, you know. Um, and that's one of the reasons I, when Brian and I were talking about the, da- the data share idea, my thought has always been, if you're voluntarily sharing your data, it's the idea that when you're, when you know someone's watching you, tend to be a little bit more on point versus mm, when point. you don't realize that people are watching you. So when you look at UAD, you look at possibly, you know, all the fear surrounding the, the recent merger of what that means as far as people watching us. It's one thing when you don't want them to be. It's another thing when you're saying, you know what, I want to share this with others and I want them to see it so we can all be better as a group. And I think that just by human nature is going to make it a higher quality kind of share just because if I'm doing it to help others and I know it's got to be the best possible, I'm not sure gonna, for lack of a better word, kind of half a it a little bit and let others suffer because I don't want to do my diligence. So that's my, you know, kind of that idea with the, with the data share is that, you know, we can still use data, but I think data can get better than it is. You know, obviously we see AVMs, we see all that fun stuff and, you know, I'm sure a lot of us laugh at it. You know, we go Zillow a property when we're uh, appraising it and you just kind of get a chuckle because it's not even in the ballpark. Mm-hmm. And, you know, obviously data is not infallible. So we have to find a way to make that better. So I think that's the biggest task we have to try to do going forward and show that we still have a worth as far as appraisers in the process. Obviously, some entities want to maybe devalue what we bring to the equation. But, you know, as an appraiser, I think we all understand it. It's just now how can we get that voice out there. Obviously podcasts like yours, you know, stuff that Mark's doing with the hundred percent group and everybody's trying to be vocal. I mean, that's the first step. And now it's just, you know, us as individuals either coming together, kind of like what Brian and I are doing on a small scale. It'd be nice to see, you know, the organizations and everything that are out there getting the enrollment higher, getting advocacy. If we can find a way to have those organizations, you know, get our voice out there and kind of show what we ultimately what we need to do to be relevant and stay within the process so we don't let ourselves get, you know, weeded out, which I think is the ultimate fear. I think it's a little unfounded. I don't, I'm not terribly scared as far as that goes. I think there's a lot of good in the future for us. It's just sometimes you have to, you got to say it loud enough that everybody hears it versus just knowing it. So mm. 
I Love think it. that's one of the biggest things on our end is that we're going to have to, we're going to have to get more vocal, you yeah. know, I locally, you know, going into realtors offices, going into doing lunch and learns at local lenders and, you know, get putting ourselves out there, which I think has been counter to what a lot of appraisers, at least the ones that I've worked around in the past, you know, I had a guy I worked with a long, worked for a long time ago who used to always say, don't educate your enemy. And for the longest time I bought into it and, you know, it took me years to finally realize that that's a really flawed thinking. Absolutely. Um, if we get out there and we, we tell everybody what's going on and educate them about PIWs, AVMs, um, desktop appraisals, you know, and, and, and caution to what those products do, then you realize that a lot of people within the process actually, they want us involved. They just, they have no idea what's going on. So, you know, between education and quality, I think those are the two biggest things we need to concentrate on to, you know, take away some of the fears. Brian, what are your thoughts? So how do you see this uh, idea rolling out? I, I know this, you know, just to set the stage, uh, listeners, Brian, Matt, and I didn't come together and say, hey, we've got a really good idea about how to take big data and compete with them. We simply uh, thought, you know what? Maybe maybe all this fear that's going on, maybe there's some ideas and some thoughts. And I think, uh, would you both agree that, that today is is more about just throwing some ideas out there and just put them in, putting them in the soup and seeing if uh, somebody wants to go out there and pick them up, right? Oh, absolutely. And I, you know, I, I'm not saying that I wouldn't be interested in being a part of something like that. I just don't know by myself how to do that. Mm -hmm. Sure. There's smarter people in this world than me that can figure things out better <laughs> when it comes to building a, a data share system, per se. Um, and I'm sure I'm not the only person or Matt or you or whoever else has ever thought this is the only person that's ever thought about it. Uh, I just figured that since I thought about it, I would reach out to you, Dustin, and be like, hey, here's a thought. Is this something you'd like to discuss? We could try to get it out there to more people. Yeah. Um, and one of the things that I do and Matt does is he said a minute ago, you know, we do these lunch and learns with title companies or realtors offices and uh, even lenders. And granted, I don't, I can't give CE for it because I'm not recognized by the state of Texas as an instructor, but we go out and we basically just answer questions and you would be shocked how many people go, thank you so much for coming to do this. I've never been told any of this stuff. And mm -hmm. we're talking about 101, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, what what constitutes gross living area? Well, okay, well, you can throw that definition at them. They've never heard it. And the thing is, is, you know, I'm a younger guy in this business, and there's people that have been doing this, you know, in other sectors of the real estate industry for years that come up to me when I do these things and say, thanks for coming. I've never talked to an appraiser like this before because nobody ever comes and offers to do this. So, you know, I'm like, oh, okay. So I've picked up on it. I, I get a lot of business and referral business for that kind of stuff because I just make myself known. It's easy. I'm not turning, I'm not creating the world or inventing fire. I'm just going out there and, you know, putting some boots on the ground and, and, and making people more aware of stuff. And like Matt said, we, I'm, I'm, I also discuss PIWs and some of these other things that we, as the appraisers in the industry, have really, you know, had thrown at us that we, we constantly are talking about, you know, the death of the appraiser. Uh, and he's right. Most of the people that I talk to boots on the ground don't want that, but their lenders are either requiring it or saying that it's okay or this or that. And I don't know where it all stems from, but that's what I get from, from the end user in the field. So we're not the only ones, I don't think, uh, in the industry that can see the value in, an actual appraiser and appraisal being performed. So that's that's that in a nutshell, I suppose. Love it. You actually hit on it perfectly. And, and as we wrap up here, guys, I just want to get your your idea uh, as to, you know, where we go from here. What, what does the appraisal profession look like in, in three to five years? I, I, want to, I want to get an opinion from Matt first and then Brian to wrap up. You know, I think in three to five years, we are going to see the integration. I'm, well, I'm hopeful we're going to see the integration of data on our side. I know a lot of appraisers, we hate UAD because we don't get to, we don't get the benefit of UAD. We have our data being taken from us and sometimes against us um, versus allowing us to have access to it. You know, what me and Brian are doing as far as peers, you know, it'd be nice to know what all your peers are doing and see what your peers are doing and kind of have that data at your fingertips. It would be, you know, a dream scenario if somehow CoreLogic and Alamode came together. 
and it's not a total data transaction after all. Sure, you know, it's the sure. internal optimist in me where it's maybe somehow CoreLogic realizes it's actually better to have appraisers with the data in their hands and somehow on it in a new form years down the road, we we have this integrated with us, built into a software, we have access to it. And now we as appraisers have more data than anyone else again. And then we can now be the valuation professionals that we all want to be and have more data than the general public does. Whereas right now, I don't know that we always feel that way. I think we think that there might be people who have more data than we do. And it's hard to to put your case out there when you don't have you don't have all the cards in the deck to play yep. the game. Yep. So that's kind of what I'm hopeful for. You know, I'd like to see, you know, the 1004 change and there'd be some da- big data integrated with it. And we, we, we go on forward to whatever the next generation of appraising is going to be. I love it. Optimistic. Brian, what are your thoughts? My thoughts are exactly basically what he just said. It's hard to, to build much more off of that. But I really also feel like it starts with us the actual appraisers and the industry actually doing it instead of relying on somebody else to do it for us. Uh, I think to some degree, maybe uh, big data has gotten big because we've basically have had no voice in, in the development of that. Uh, you know, shout out to guys like Mark Skaffinitz for creating a group that's gotten so big on Facebook, where it brings us together across the nation. And if we didn't have that, we would never know each other. Absolutely. Heck, me and Matt live one county away from each other. But without that group, we would have met. never met. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So when it comes down to it, it's stuff like that that, it, that creates the, the peer sharing, whether it's ideas, data, conversations, just sitting around blowing some steam off, whatever it is, that's where this kind of stuff starts. So it's already happening, in my honest opinion. It's how do we organize it? How does it become something that could be, uh, I don't want to call it tangible, because in the appraisal world, that's nothing's really tangible. But instead of just being an idea, it could be something that was in motion. Um, So, you know, why not? Everybody else has data, and we're the ones going out and gathering it. And why can't we have a segment of our own where it's like, hey, guess what? The machine or whoever else you want to you know, throw it at, go, hey, instead of them being able to be the only source that people can go to for it, they could come directly to us. There's other segments out in the residential world that I think we could collect that would never actually end up in that capacity. Ask any general certified appraiser who uh, does nothing but commercial work. They have a smaller group of people with data uh, that they rely on yep. to to be able to do stuff that could change you know in the in the future as well uh, it may be bigger than I think I don't know that because I'm not in that circle but just talking to a few guys that I know uh, they have small group circles kind of like what we're talking about here so it, it can be done and it has been yeah and, and just not on a big scale but I, I love your optimism Brian Kirkpatrick and Matt Hyatt thanks guys for joining me Absolutely. Two very positive uh, uh, young men. I think appraisers uh, listening, this is the direction we need to go. There, you can you can hide your head in the sand and say it's not happening, or you can run around and say the the sky is falling, or we can be proactive about uh, reaching out and and creating what we want in the future. And I think that's what we're what we're talking about. Speaking of uh, what you want in the future, uh, how about re? organizing, re, uh, really transforming your business. Uh, that's what we do inside the Appraiser uh, Dream Team Mastermind. Uh, we meet in six cities across the nation, in D.C., Chicago, Salt Lake, Dallas, and two in Vegas. And we do have openings uh, for a few seats if you're interested in uh, moving your business forward into this new uh, frontier, if, it w- if you will, with the appraisal profession. Please reach out to me. Go to uh, my website theappraisercoach.com. Click on memberships. We would love to uh, to vet you out and make sure that you're a good fit for the uh, program. Uh, would love to help you to move your business in the right direction as we move into some turbulent waters coming down the road uh, with regard to appraisals, but it doesn't need to be. Again, optimism and proactive activity, I think, will change that. Again, my thanks to Brian and Matt for joining us today, and uh, to my listeners, thank you for joining me, and we will catch you next time. You've been listening to the Appraiser Coach Podcast with Dustin Harris. If you like what you hear, please give us a five-star rating and post a short review on iTunes. 
for more in-depth insider information on how you can make more money as a real estate appraiser, visit theappraisercoach.com and sign up for the All-Star Team today. Thanks for joining us. And now, get out there and create some value. The ad, ad, uh, I can't talk, sorry. <laughs> it's all ad, good. That's, ad, that's, ad, what, that's what an ed, editor is for, so. Gosh, I hate that word. Um, 